Hi there, YouTube family, and welcome into We're So Jaded video with, with Glitzy Fritzy Mary from her channel and me. We are doing a look, each of us are doing a look from a We're, the We're So Jaded palette from ColourPop and Kathleen Lights, which I have been loving, by the way. The past three looks that I've done has been out of this palette, and I have really liked it. Guys, now if you don't know who Mary is, Glitzy Fritzy, if you don't know who this gal is, you need her in your life. She and has a great channel where she does such in-depth reviews. A lot of times she will do a whole entire skincare line or a whole entire cosmetics line or brush line or whatever. And she just interjects fun as she's doing it, which I absolutely love about her. And I love that she's not afraid to laugh at herself. And I love that she just is just really genuine. I have been watching her for several years, ever since I started watching YouTube. And I've loved her every bit. I mean, I watched her from having the longer hair to having the shorter hair. And now she's gone totally natural gray. And she is just aging gracefully. And she's absolutely beautiful. And she just has a beautiful soul as well. And you can tell that from her videos. She's just a great person. And she has a treat for everyone at the end of her videos, which I think is fantastic. I actually could sit here and talk about Mary all day long. She just becomes such a good friend and such a wonderful supporter of my channel. And I just thank her for all of that. She just is a great person. And I hope that you guys go over and show her some love, watch a few of her videos, subscribe to her and give her big old thumbs up on our collab video because I just, I'm really honored that I get to do this collab with her. So I hope that you guys enjoy her as much as, as I do. And just really quickly recap to you that this palette is just a good palette. It really is. It's up to ColourPop standards. It is a fantastic palette. If you guys want to see another look out of this, I could probably do that for you because I know this is a palette that's going to be really popular and a lot of people are going to get it. I hope that you guys do enjoy the story time. It is not gross like my last one, thank goodness. But if you haven't seen the last one, you might want to go see it because it was a doozer. Anyway, here we go into the story time video. Get ready with me. We're so dated, me and Mary. Okay, guys, this is my third attempt at trying to make this video. I've filmed it two other times and I wasn't happy with it and I wanted to do Miss Mary some justice. So I'm back again. Okay, my the reason that I already have my foundation, my eyebrows, and my concealer on is because I... The story is not that long, I guess. So I'm going to try and time the story a little bit better this time. So since this setting is of our childhood memories and going back to school and then, you know, the teacher says, what was your, what was your summer like? What did you do this summer? And telling your story. So I had a really interesting one that I wanted to tell. So the one that I chose to tell you guys is one that actually was, it's just surreal. You just, it's like the last story time I told you, the disgusting story time. It's like that, you're like, how do you even live through something like that, right? Okay, so it is the summer before sixth grade, I think, I was 12. And I thought I was just hot stuff. I had gotten my period that summer and, you know, thought I was all grown up and everything and, you know, you know how you, yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> basically what happened was my dad decides that he wants to go to the rodeo, which is great. I love the rodeo. Mom, Mom decides not to go. And the grownups that dad was having go with him, they decide not to go. So it's just me and dad. But their kids were so heartbroken that dad decides that he's going to take their two little kids. And there's one that is like seven. And then I think there was one that was five. And then he also took my my niece, um, who was like my mom and dad's second child. She grew up with me and um, yeah, she's five years younger than me. So she was um, seven at the time as well. So we are all excited. You know, us kids were really excited. So, so it's dad and these other two little kids and my niece. So there's five of us. And so four kids and dad. So the other part of the story is that my mother always bought me my school clothes almost a month before school. 
And where I lived, where I was born and raised in Utah, bloody hot in the end of August. I mean, it's hot. And that's when we were getting ready to go to the rodeo and everything. So mom had just bought me all these clothes. And of course you don't buy a kid that's going back to school anything that's summery, you buy them all, you know, winter clothes. So I had these really cute long jeans that had a little bit of embroidery. It's the eighties guys. Yeah, we had embroidery on our jeans. Anyway, really cute little jeans. And then I had this long sleeved, pretty heavy top that had embroidery right here and a little, a little collar right there that flipped up. I thought I was just hot stuff, you know, just really, really hot stuff. So I get all dressed for the rodeo and I am dying. I mean, keep in mind, you guys, we didn't even have air conditioning in our car then, you know, it was just hot. And so I'm dying all the way to the rodeo, which is like 20 minutes away and we're sitting there and the sun hasn't gone down yet and I'm dying at the rodeo and it's just like dripping sweat. And all I can think about, I can't even think about the rodeo hardly because all I can think about is the fact that I am just hot. So we can sit down and everything is cool. Everything is just fine. And you know, dad enjoys the rodeo. My favorite part of a rodeo is the barrel racing. Dad loves um, the bronc. Uh, the bucking bronx and, and then the bull riding that's his favorite part are those two and so I'm enjoying the barrel racing I love to see those girls go so fast oh and, and there's another part that I love and it's called mutton busting have you guys ever heard of this <laughs> It's so cute. These little tiny kids um, get on a sheep and they try to ride it across the arena as far as they can. And they're just basically clinging on to them for dear life, almost like a bron a bronc or a, a bull, but they're on these little sheep and they're bolting across, you know, bolting across the arena. It's way cute. None of them ever get hurt. They've done it for a long time and the sheep are close to the ground. So none of these little kids ever get hurt, but it's really cute. And the sheep definitely don't get hurt either. They're, they're just there to have fun. So anyway, um, in all of this, we get to the bronc riding and we had a great time with the bronc riding. And then we get, I know this looks like a mess, you guys, but I swear it's gonna come together. And then we get to the bull riding part, right? So we are, um, you know, just sitting there and we're excited, but those bulls are big. So we're talking literally a 2000 pound animal out there that you're watching and these weirdos or whatever, crazy men or, or uh, extremely brave men are out there riding these things, right? So it's just nuts and, but that's fun. It's a lot of fun, you know, and here's us little kids and we're with my dad and um, you know, we're just having all kinds of fun. We get about four or five riders in, right? And um, this one rider, he gets on this bull and this bull is just mean as can be. You can tell he's twisting and he's bucking and he's going nuts and he throws that rider within like the first two seconds. They're supposed to hang on for like eight seconds, right? So this bull is mad. He's just mad. They and they have the, the thing that goes under their gut, the cinch that goes under their gut that they hold on to, the cowboys do. And the pickup riders, I don't know if you guys know what a pickup rider is, but it's two guys on a horse that will go around, not one guy, each horse. Anyway, two horses and two riders go around and they undo that cinch on that bull if they can get close enough to it. And the other thing they do is they kind of herd that bull out of the arena towards the gate where they go out, right? Well, this bull, he is angry and he don't want to cooperate and he don't want to be there. And it didn't matter what they did for him. He was just going to be mean and ugly and nasty. And he was fighting them at every turn. Even the rodeo clowns, that's their job to get up in there. They take care of those bulls and, um, you know, they distract them from the riders or they distract them from whoever the bull's going after because they'll charge. Um, you know, it's part of the trade. It's what they do. But here's the thing about Brahma bulls, you guys. I was raised around cattle a lot, around horses a lot. Even though we were, we were in the city, my dad always kept horses in a pasture behind our house. And the other thing is that, um, you know, he was a true cowboy and dad knows all of it. But he knew this man that actually owned all of the bulls for, for the rodeo circuit and that those bulls would come. And so um, dad was with that guy one day and um, he was talking about the bulls. They went over to the pasture by where they were at and the bulls, you know, they're just laying down and, and dad's like, well, they're pretty calm. And he's like, well, they always are. And dad's like, okay. And this guy proceeds to tell my dad that um, you know they know when to perform or they know what their job is really you know a horse when he is a trained horse for cutting cattle or whatever he does in the arena 
or anything like jumping, whatever they do, they know when they're ready to perform or they know when it's ready, you know, time, show time, show time. Anyway, so here's this bowl. I don't know if he was just the extra mean bowl that night. I don't know if he was just not ready to perform what the deal was, but he just wasn't a happy camper and he, they could not get him to go out. There was no way to get him to go out of this arena. And they tried and they tried and the clowns tried and the pickup guys tried. And finally, the pickup guys had him boxed in um, to where they were going to try and, you know, kind of push him towards the gate, which was on the left side of where me and my dad and these kids were sitting. And we were about 10, maybe eight, 10 rows up. And so they came right in front of us and they get this bull, um, you know, to where he's cornered right in front of our part of the arena. And then they're going to move him towards where he needs to go, his gate where he needs to go. And he is mad and he keeps running back and forth like this across that fence there and the fence is tall I mean the, the, I don't know how tall it was maybe maybe eight maybe ten feet I don't know how, how how high it was but it was pretty high because you know when you're sitting down there in the front row you have to look through the railing in order to see the bull and so he's mad he's back and forth all of a sudden he jumps over that fence right into the stands right where we were. I kid you not, that two-ton animal jumped the fence and came into the stands. And people, it was pandemonium, you guys. It was crazy. And here my dad is with all these little kids, right? And he is trying to hurt us. And he just scooped those three little kids up. And he's like going for, you know, the opposite way. And the people, you know, I was like looking at the people and dad screamed back to me. He goes, hold on to my belt. And so I just grabbed the back of dad's pants. And I'm holding on for dear life, right? At this point, I am freaked out. Kids are screaming. Old people are falling. I mean, it wasn't like people were trampling on them or anything, but there was a lot of older people there because it's, you know, an older community where we were. And oh my goodness, I, I was so scared. I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life. And so he keeps coming up towards everybody and he, you know, I don't know how he made it, but he made it like four bleachers up about. And just about then when he made it up those bleachers, he turns and his legs get caught in the stands. So he's turned sideways down into the bleachers and he's kicking and thrashing. And as a little girl, I look back and we're under, by this time we're like exiting and we're under the bleachers and I look back and there's his feet dangling underneath the bleachers. And you wanna talk about scared, you guys. I was so scared as a little girl. It was just absolutely nuts what was going on. And then we finally catch our breath and try to figure out, you know, what we're, what they're going to do with the rest of the rodeo because that was only like three or four men in on the riding. And what happened was the guys that were the pickup guys and a few other cowboys, they just grabbed their ropes and they hooked onto his head and they hooked onto his, you know, tail, ran a rope around his abdomen and they got the horses and they basically just kind of hoisted him out of there. And it was quite an ordeal. I'm not kidding. My dad was just like, I'm done. And he just took us all home. But it was so scary. The bull was fine. The bull had nothing wrong with him. I think he got a couple of scrapes from falling through the bleachers. But what was absolutely amazing to me is that no one got hurt except for one gentleman. And he was an elderly gentleman, like I was saying, but he just fell, you know, over as he was trying to get away from it because he was one of the first people down there in the first couple bleachers. So yeah, he was the only one that got something hurt, but he didn't break anything. He just got some cuts and bruises. And there were people that were like actually picking him up and, you know, helping him, which I thought was just awesome. As a kid, I was thinking, you know, what do you do? But I was holding on to dad for dear life. I can tell you that I, he was just like pulling me along. I don't know how dad did it because it was like, three little kids in his arm and me pulling in the back of him, you know, and it was just, it was nuts, you guys. It was absolutely nuts. It was one of those ones you're just like, how did we live through that? How did everybody live through that without getting hurt? Okay, guys, I put my mascara and my lipstick both on off camera. I can't talk and do either one of those at the same time, but all's well that ends well because nobody was really hurt except for that one gentleman and thank goodness it was only superficial and then you know the other thing i just thought was so weird as a kid and going home was 
I was just, I was full of questions and just asking dad a million questions. And I couldn't figure out why dad was so quiet. And as a parent now, I can just imagine what was going through his mind, all the things that really could have gone wrong and how those little tiny kids, two seven-year-olds and two and a five-year-old, how those little tiny kids could have really been hurt really badly. And even me, I could have, you know, we were right there. I mean, I swear I felt the snot come off that bull and spray all over as he was so close to us. And that was probably, you know, probably exaggeration, but you know what I mean. He was that close to us and I will never forget that end of summer story either. So when I went back to school, I had a doozer to tell everybody. So that is it for today's video, you guys. I can't wait to see what Mary came up with. I hope that if you guys come from my channel and go over to her channel that you watch all the way through. Please do that because she has usually a treat for you at the end and I absolutely love her endings but I love this gal anyway. So please don't forget to go over, show her some love, subscribe, give her a thumbs up, and don't forget to give my video a thumbs up too, please. I really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for spending a part of your day with me. I hope you enjoyed everything. I hope everyone is well. You all take care of yourselves. I'll see you in my very next video. I love you much. Bye-bye.